All right, welcome back to the Soul Calibur 6 Let's Play. Now, before we continue on, let me just show you this some um, real quickly. Uh, so I eventually bought the Season Pass 2. So overall, I spent over 120 bucks on this game. <laughs> That's the 60 bucks for the initial game, uh, 30 bucks for Season 1, and an extra $33.99 for Season 2. So in total, 124 bucks that I spent on this game. I do not recommend doing this unless you're a really, really dedicated Soul Calibur fan, I guess. This is kind of remind me of the Dead or Alive 6 uh, debacle, which I guess for fans, like if you're just that committed, then sure. But for casual viewers, like no, don't don't even bother. Uh, I definitely recommend waiting for a sale to buy Soul Calibur 6 when it's like 20 bucks and then maybe get the season passes but if this if, if you're if you're planning on buying this game full price uh don't <laughs> really don't um i think it's on sale uh not on sale but it's been discounted for 20 bucks like recently on consoles but because i'm playing on steam it's apparently stuck at 60 bucks or something so uh yeah and if I plan on playing on console, <laughs> uh, that's gonna be uh, lots of money down the drain. Anyways, Valdo 1, the secret money pit. How to play as Valdo, ladies and gentlemen. I do not know. I think if I get here, I'm gonna lower it a little bit. There we go. I think it should be fine. <laughs> and his underground treasury, the money pit. After getting rich in the weapons trade and earning the title of Merchant of Death, Verci set sail with his fleet to find the legendary Soul Edge. But during his quest, Verci learned his entire fortune had been lost in the chaos of a war that broke out in Italy. Half crazed, Verci hid what little he had left in the impenetrable money pit located on a small island in the Mediterranean. There he stationed a grotesque guardian who silently and mercilessly disposed of all who entered, quickly becoming the fear of all looters. In recent years, however, a new rumor began to spread among some adventurers. Historic rainfall had caused flooding in the money pit, destroying most of its traps. The Guardian had also vanished, leaving the treasure free for the taking. So yeah, that's essentially Voldo's story and also Calibur from what I remember. He is just a slave to his master, essentially. <laughs> I can't believe we got through the money pit that easily. Thanks for the help, Ivy. Looks like that tip about the money pit being abandoned was true. Yeah, all we had to do is rely on that trusty sword of yours. Traps don't scare us as long as we have you. But hey, aren't you gonna take any of the treasure for yourself? I only care for items related to Soul Edge, and I already have what I wanted. Now I just need to find Verchi's notes. Always so serious. You're beautiful and you're strong, so, you know, we could... Huh? What the hell is that? The sword's resonating? Hey, what did you go quiet for? Well, don't drop the treasure there. Huh? Oh, this, this is a head! Above you! Ready your weapon! Huh? Ah! Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I knew this was too good to be true. That's your target, Blade! The Guardian! Ha! Slice up everything that comes near us, Blade! Missed? Oh no! Ugh, I'm at a disadvantage fighting here! My blade! Show me the way out! God, it would be nice to see all this animated though. Jeez. <laughs> right, well, so much for fighting her, I guess, but at least we got to fight her minions. We didn't, but we got to see them die in the cutscene, I guess. On his return to the money pit, Valdo was greeted by invaders. 
those whose lives he set to taking one by one. Seeing the opportunity to cause a cave-in, the warrior Ivy cut through the ceiling, blocking off Valdo from pursuing her. Apart from Ivy, only a few of them escaped with their lives. One of them had managed to get their hands on something highly more valuable, however. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm speaking in a faux British accent, but uh... Sure, let's roll with it, especially since this place actually takes place in, in Italy. Room of the dark so, it'll be more like a, I, I talk like this or uh, something, I don't know. <laughs> it's a me, Evaldo, and I'm do not, do not uh, steal any of my treasures or I will slice and dice your heads off and feed them to my master. My cannibal uh, my cannibalistic master, apparently. A dark vestige of the talented man who had once served as Verci's right hand. Long years underground had robbed Voldo of his sight and sanity. Before his dead master's sarcophagus, he reported his failures. Voldo deeply regretted the fact that he had left the money pit for three years in order to find Soul Edge. And although he was completely alone, Voldo heard a familiar voice. Thank you for your report, Voldo. With new challenges often come failure. Learn from your failures, and you shall be wiser. While you were in the outside world, the money pit was flooded, and the traps were all destroyed. Now then, enough lamenting. You have important work to do. But there's one thing we must do first. I'm sure you have felt it right. The aura emanating from the swordswoman Ivy. My merchant's intuition speaks to me. That aura comes from the legendary sword I spent years seeking, Soul Edge. She also stole a portion of my notes, which are some of my most valuable possessions. And of course, we can't let the other thieving rats get away with the treasure they stole. Therefore, Voldo, I shall give you two missions. Your first is to track down that woman and acquire all the clues you can concerning Soul Edge. Your second is to reclaim my notes, as well as all the pieces of my collection that were stolen. Some of the vermin still remain on this island. Exterminate them first and reclaim what they stole. I'm not the one to talk, but what the hell is a dead guy going to do with his treasures if he's, you know, dead? <laughs> Master Versace? <laughs> Something. Master, what do you want to do with the... Uh... this sword? That's really something. Not that I expected any less from Verci's collection. Verci's, not Versace's. <laughs> Verci's, there we go. What was that sound? The wind? It is I, Evaldo! Ah! Alright, do I get to fight finally? Even though I do not know how to play as Voldo. <laughs> okay. Okay, he has that. I know he could switch stances if he wants to. That's not how you do it. He has a behind stance, which would very much hurt him in the long run, I feel. Okay. Oh. I'm not sure how to switch stances, though. Oh, there's one way. I'm still stuck in the behind stance. Not sure how to... S there we go, alright. Now time for the drill dozer! Eee! Alright. Okay. You know, I gotta say, out of all the characters in Soul Calibur, I think Volvo has got to easily be the most sexualized one in this game. Am I fighting Lloyd Irving? Oh, poor lord. First, he's been deconfirmed as a Smash Bros. character. That's gonna get very dated if he's actually the Smash Bros. character in Fighters Past 5. Damn. 
By the way, by the time I'm recording this, two days from now, there will be a Fighter's Pass 5 announcement, thanks to Sakurai-san himself. The adventurers had looted a number of the strange weapons Verchi had collected. With Verchi's treasure before him, Voldo reminisced as he held in his hands an unusual pair of blades from India. Amid the moonlight reflecting off the blood-stained blades, old memories began to resurface in his mind. What? You've never seen a pair of Jamadars? They're also known as Bundi Daggers. Other merchants call them guitars, but they're mistaken. If you wish to become the next Merchant of Death someday, you'll need to learn all about weapons and their uses. Here, I'll lend them to you, but make sure you return them to me. <laughs> My instincts tell me they will be a good match for you. Go on, give them a swing. Do we ever get to see, like, Voldo before his BDSM era, or not? Disposing of the invaders' corpses, Voldo set about storing the money traps and its money pit in its traps. Once finished, he secured the entrance and headed out for the journey to complete the mission assigned to him by Versace. <laughs> ah, screw it. His name's Versace now. Scent was fading, but that did oh, can't get Voldo. <laughs> Honing his senses for years yeah, you guys think Ivy's the most sexualized, not uh, Valdo. He is all about <laughs> the naughty bits. That people leave behind. As Voldo moved north, tracking Ivy's unique aura, he continued reclaiming the treasures stolen from his master. Hand it over, Grandpa! Wait! Take anything you want but this! <laughs> Why? Because that one will fetch the highest price? What was that? I just heard footsteps. Jesus, Voldo's taking no prisoners. I feel like he would fit very perfectly as a Mortal Kombat character, you know? Like, he's gotta be, like, the most goriest character, I think, that's willing to decapitate and amputate. And I think out of all the Soul Calibur characters, he's the most likely one to get maimed. Because, let's face it, out of all the Soul Calibur characters, do you want any of your waifus to be killed? What? Or husbandos like Maxi <laughs> and Mitsurugi? Nuh uh. Valdo's the one that probably everyone doesn't mind seeing beheaded, I feel. <laughs> Alright, how do I do the hump thing? Oh, well, so much for that. I need to figure out how to get into that stance in the first place. Okay. So it's kick and... <laughs> Let's see you block this string of attacks. Oh no! Okay, you can parry it. Um... Okay. <laughs> Please tell me that's also a parry as well. <laughs> Thrust him to death! <laughs> oh my god. His dick attack is like a parry at the same time, like judging from the guard impact icon. Holy crap. The scent of Verchi's treasures wafted up from the golden blade that the old merchant cradled. It was the item that launched Verchi's quest for the golden treasures of the Orient, prior to his search for Soul Edge. You want to stop looking for Soul Edge? Verchi, we just began your search for the golden treasures of the Orient, and now you want to go off looking for a sword that's nothing more than a rumor? You must be mad. You're either a wolf or a sheep, Enrico. It's hunt to be hunted, and only the bold come out on top. Bad enough about this. I'll lead the search for Soul Edge, and you, Voldo, will assist me each step of the way. What? But he's so young, he isn't even family. 
Wait, there she. <laughs> Trusting others. You're Enrique? Enrico? Fuck, I gotta stop. <laughs> If only I would have protected our fortune during the war, Vergi would still be here. You can have the blade. <laughs> he didn't take the sword. <laughs> Perhaps Voldo decided that he only needed to recover what had been truly stolen, whatever the case. Voldo soon disappeared, leaving the golden blade with the old merchant. Heading north, Voldo sent something peculiar. Ivy Zora seemed to have split into two and was heading both to the north and the west. Though confused at this turn of events, at the back of Voldo's mind, his memories of Soul Edge called for him to call to head west. Trusting his instincts, he continued onward towards Spain. Oh, mamma mia. Wait, isn't this India? Aura, <laughs> isn't this the Indian like, stage, or is Maxi also Spanish? That's when he realized I could have sworn that Maxi was like once visited this port, somewhere in Asia, right? Still thrived. Uh, I could be wrong. He was a However, pirate, so I guess that kind of lines in with the history the of Spaniards invading. So no, the Black I don't know. Tail Inn. The next thing Boldo knew, he was surrounded by spirits of the dead. Steal, kill, and steal again. <laughs> Hold on, unless the stage is actually different. No, this is... I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> Anyways, a phantom sailor. He's nothing but bones. Alright. Okay, yeah. No idea how to play Baldo at all. <laughs> I don't want to say he's beginner friendly at all. He really isn't. He's just... He has a playstyle that I could grab. <laughs> Assuming I'm not in my back stance or my humping stance, I think I could. Alright. Alright, so I'm not completely invulnerable when that happens. So I'm able to, like, block still, even when I'm from my behind, it seems. Dang it. Screw it. Let's see his critical edge. Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> oh man. He's such a weird character. You just gotta love him, you know? Oh no. Oh my god, he's coming, girl. He's coming for that booty. The skeleton booty. <laughs> Jesus. Cervantes, curse you! The scent of the ocean breeze, the whispers of the name Cervantes by the dead. Together, they caused a distant memory to surge up from the deep recesses of Voldo's mind. Enlist the help of the notorious pirate Cervantes de Leon in your quest for Soul Edge. A okay. mission to negotiate with a pirate infamous for his cruelty meant almost certain well, makes sense since Cervantes Still, to Cervantes is the main antagonist against Ivy, Ivy Isabella to carry de, out his duty de, 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 I don't know what's her last name <laughs> so Vergi's offering me 12 saker cannons along with this pistol sword you brought hmm. it's certainly a rare item I see Vergi taught you something about the art of appraisal. Okay, I, I I am definitely not the type of person that could be misjudged by accents, especially one 
that notoriously keeps on messing up accents myself. But how come Cervantes sounds Irish? When he's supposed to be a Spaniard? My my, a bullet grazes your cheek and you don't even blink. <laughs> I don't know, I, I feel like Cerva like since Cervantes is a Spaniard, he would have to like be more like a slightly accentuated Italian, I guess, but I guess that's in a way that's kind of like an Irish accent, but I don't know. Send me the same things he gave to the Spanish Armada. I'll accept the deal and let you return with good news. It will be good for a little amusement at least. Whatever the case is, he the voice just screams Steve Bloom. For sure. And I don't even know if he's actually the actor for Cervantes. I'm gonna have to look that up just in case. Uh, why did Ivy's aura seem to be emanating from Cervantes' old headquarters? Valdo didn't have the answer, but knowing who it was, he should pursue at least pre represented a significant step forward. Gathering his master's treasures there, though scattered around Spain along the way, Valdo followed the trail of Ivy's aura to the east. Because that's his daddy! That's a daddy. I say his, sorry. That's Avi's daddy. That's why he has the aura. He became aware of two things. The first was that Ivy had crossed the mountains and was now moving west. The other was that he was not alone in this hunt. Some unknown group was also secretly tracking Ivy. Regardless of who they were, Voldo had no doubt they would only hinder his mission. Patrick Sites. So wow. Okay, I got that mixed up. <laughs> okay, that definitely sounds like Scorpion's voice for sure. The doomed woman. I don't know why it says Steve Bloom. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Patrick. I'm sorry for misidentifying you. And why do we need so many people? I like that voice. Once you see her blade I action, like his voice. Patrick Seitz has been doing great work for the voice worry. acting community, I feel. Whatever happens. But something's off. We should have been engaging the enemy by now. Where's the signal? What the? Now, that begs the question, the who's Baldo's this? voice actor? <laughs> Hold up a sec. I'm kind of curious now. All right, I'll find out after this battle. Oh, eat. Right, is this gonna work? Okay, I gotta start doing some more low attacks. I'm behind. I can't do anything. There we go. That works, I guess. <laughs> you thought I was gonna attack? Idiot. Alright, Voldo, 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 where are you? Oh, okay, no time for Voldo. How many more is there left? Alright, this is the last one, so... That was a taunt. Why did I do that? Okay, so taunt is guard and kick at the same time, it looks like. That was a pretty strong attack, it seems. That missed. Yeah, just do a low kick. It'll work. Alright, hold on. Let me check. Voldo, 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 where are you? Where's Voldo? Does Voldo not have a voice actor? <laughs> We're being attacked by an unidentified entity. I need to report. Why did it? <clears throat> no. I'm trying to search up Voldo, and it autocorrected to blood for some reason. Now it's just autocorrected to condo. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it, autocorrect. Oh, right. I forgot you have no sense of humor. Never thought the day would come when I'd be saved by you. Don't expect me to thank you. <laughs> yeah, Valdo just doesn't have a voice actor, apparently. Damn! 
No love for Baldo's actor, unless it's just a bunch of Bowser growls. After disposing of all those in his way, Valdo has finally in the position to attack Ivy. He had hoped to do so without drawing attention to himself, but somehow Ivy had known about her pursuer's presence all along. Alright, now that we've been united, Long what gives? Time no see, Guardian. Or should I say, Valdo. I could sense you approaching. I've gained a lot of experience since we last met, you know. I also did a little research. Research on the Merchant of Death and the young man who worked as his shrewd right-hand man. As someone whose life was also ruined by that cursed sword, it's hard not to feel sorry for you. <laughs> I know. You want this box, right? Then fight me and win it back. I guess Volta doesn't have a, an official voice actor, or if he does, it's just, I guess, sound effects or something? Monster noises, maybe? It's the same thing, I guess, like with Lizard Man or Aeon. Okay. How are these two bitches surviving in the Arctic cold? They've got assless chaps, thongs, and. Tight stockings. How the hell are they surviving? <laughs> I'm just saying, this feels very impractical to fight in the cold with nothing but a thong. And some nip chaps or something. Oh shoot. Didn't mean to do that. Oh well. I'm having this. Oh! She just blocked. I thought she was gonna do an attack or something, but she didn't. Oh, that's a low attack. Shoot. Oh no, I can't grab her. Oh. <laughs> oh god, my dick! Okay, maybe thrusting her is a bad idea. Maybe. Wait, right, yeah, it's always the last battle that always kicks my ass. Come on. <laughs> she did horizontal attack, so that beats out. Vertical attacks. But she did a kick that time. That worked. <laughs> that was just a lucky guess. Oh god, from the perspective of Ivy and her legs like that? Valda, what are you doing? <laughs> a loyal blade. Void of any hesitation. You know, I feel a little envious of you now. <clears throat> I don't need this anymore. Take it. But let me tell you one thing. The soul edge you seek has already been destroyed. If you want to see for yourself, head to Ostreinsberg. Farewell. After throwing Verchi's box back to Voldo, Ivy leapt off the cliff and used her snake sword to disappear into the mountains. Voldo could have followed her, but the risk of dropping the precious box was too great. <laughs> Since he had already collected several other treasures, Voldo decided to return to the mountains. You know, throughout the journey that Voldo has come across, you would expect that there would be no guards in the money pit, right? <laughs> It was safe to say that Valdo has served his master well, arriving back to the money pit. He returned the treasures to their original places before heading to Versace's tomb to debrief his deceased master on a mission accomplished. Like I said, apparently no one was bothered trying to Standing attempt them as Valdo was trying to more, gather the swords, but okay. <laughs> before long, amid an eerie glow, 
Verci appeared before his loyal servant. Welcome back. You have my thanks for completing both your missions. I find it hard to believe that Soul Edge was destroyed, but we will learn the truth in time. First, we should rejoice that my treasures are now back where they belong. Also, the woman may have stolen a portion of my notes, but in this box are our letters. <laughs> The letters we exchanged while you were assisting me in my search for Soul Edge. These easily contain more information than one could ever glean from my notes. I'm sure she would want to get her hands on them. However, the real reason I value this box so much... ...is because it contains... A record of my successor completing all his training. <laughs> That's me. That remained loyal to his master long after his demise proved how much they trusted each other. Deep within the dark pit, in a hollow darkness lit only by God, the God, what a lonely existence Waldo must gold. have lived. <laughs> Voldo basked in a new blissful light, born from Berchi's everlasting trust. And that was Vaudel's story. He is weird to play. <laughs> like I said, um, the way he plays is just... I feel a little bit too advanced for me personally. He has different stances, which I probably didn't even showcase that properly. Um, and I'm pretty sure he has different ways of uh, attacking properly. I will say, I think he's a little bit more closer range since his weapons are not that like close quarters. Comp his uh, weapons are not far reaching. So he'll have that issue, but otherwise, like, yeah, Waldo's Waldo. <laughs> Up next is gonna be Yoshimitsu, uh, so we'll be seeing him in the next episode, so stay tuned for that. I kinda know how to play as Yoshimitsu in Tekken, <laughs> not so much in Soul Calibur, but I assume that he kinda plays similarly to his Tekken counterpart. We'll see, anyways. We'll be right back with the next episode of Soul Calibur 6. Stay tuned.